After dominating the electric hatchback for two generations with the Leaf, Nissan is finally here with their mid-size electric SUV, the Aria. Kind of late to the party, but the big question is, has it been worth the wait? We're going to find that out in today's video. I think the exterior is actually quite striking and very different than, you know, most offerings in the midsize electric SUV market. I really applaud Nissan for, you know, daring to be different than the norm and I think it has worked out really nicely for the exterior design of the Nissan Aria. So the front end aggressive it looks you know unique i really do like those thin headlights the boomerang led lights and also you know that blacked out frontal area i just think it works really nicely you know clean surfaces that just look aggressive you know the side profile also is like that fast back shape not too interesting you know today i do like that this has you know a contrasting black roof though this isn't my favorite color but what's interesting is you know it's quite slab sided with you know big and high doors i do like that it makes the th whole thing look imposing and big then the rear end i really do like that rear light bar across the width of the rear and actually looks a little lexus like this exterior just looks quite premium so i think the exterior is one of the best in the mid-size electric suv you know segment Hopping inside the cabin of the Nissan Aria, this is a very nice place. It's spacious, it's airy, and having spent a little time in the Tesla Model Y recently, I have to say this cabin feels just as airy, just as spacious, even though this car is a tad bit shorter and narrower on the exterior. But what is a really huge surprise is the level of quality in here, because this feels closer to a Lexus than it does to a Volkswagen ID4, and that's saying a lot. So you have this faux stitch leather across the whole dashboard you have it here on the upper parts of the door you have it here on the armrest and on the center console you also have interesting trim like this carpet trim here on the air vents and to top everything off you have this wood trim across the whole dashboard where you actually have the hvac controls built in as a touch panel which is really really cool i mean if we're going to have touch buttons it's better to have it this way than behind you know a glossy black panel this just looks really cool and really modern i've only seen that in the bmw ix where they are able to implement you know that uh, haptic touch button panel into other trim than you know glossy black plastic or a touch screen you also have it here on the center console which is even more impressive you have your e-pedal button here and you also have your drive modes overall you know this interior even the seats look nice it just looks like a premium product you know it looks closer to something like a nissan gtr than it does to a volkswagen gti and that is saying a lot you have a shifter here which is placed really nicely it does feel a little bit flimsy and cheap though it is illuminated around the border i do like the placement and also this steering wheel feels nice you have perforated leather here on the sides of the steering wheel and then you have smooth leather on the top and the bottom it's also a two-spoke design which I don't think looks you know particularly sporty but it looks it, it works really nice and you have you know this nice accent here on the bottom we're going to do the infotainment system in a separate section of this video but we have dual 12.3 inch displays and then the last thing with the interior is that you also have this volume knob no not the best placement because i do have to stretch you know uh to adjust it but it's so nice to interact with something physical and mechanical like that yeah the front cabin is impressive let's hop back and check the rear seats the rear seats of the nissan aria is just as impressive as the front cabin so first off you have the same high quality materials and feel in the rear cabin you still have soft touch plastics on the top of the doors you still have that faux stitch leather high up on the doors and the armrest stitched in faux leather you also have that wood trim here on the rear of the center console with two vents it just feels high quality you even have soft padding on the b pillar i don't even have that on my porsche this high in the cabin so i have to say these rear seats are really really impressive and also room is really nice i have about this much headroom though this does not have the optional panoramic sunroof that may you know uh, reduce the headroom a little bit i do have a lot in knee room and i said this is a little bit smaller than a tesla model y but i have this much knee room behind myself i'm five foot ten or 178 centimeters and i didn't have this much room 
behind myself in a Tesla Model Y. So the rear seats is really impressive. You have, you know, this armrest here with dual cup holders. It just, it feels wide and you also have a flat floor. So even you're gonna be comfortable sitting in the middle seat. My only complaint is that, you know, the, the seat could have been a little bit higher. You have less thigh support here on a long trip and that wouldn't be such an issue if there was a little bit more room for my feet under the front seat which is a little bit lacking. I just want to take a second to thank you so much for clicking on this video. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. Every view, every like, every subscription. You guys really make this possible for me to do this basically as a living at this point in time. So thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. And also, if you do like the content, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on all the cool and upcoming videos and cars I have here on the channel in the, the next weeks and months. It's going to be really exciting and also if you don't want to do that you just want to you know watch this video i would really appreciate it if you guys just hit that like button down below and also i want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor septic with their septic go which is a cool small and stylish home charger that can charge up to 11 kilowatts on ac charging you can also order it in a whole bunch of different colors and if you live in norway go to the link down below and use the discount code saprifa to get 10% off your purchase. So thank you very much. And now back to the review. The car we're testing today is the entry level version with the small battery pack. Net capacity 63 kilowatt hours, giving this car a WLTP rated range of 403 kilometers. But like every other electric car on the market, if you're going in the real world on a motorway, you're not gonna get close to that number. So if you wanna find out how far this car will go on a motorway at 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles per hour over distance, I will link my test in the description box down below. This car is a mid-size, you know, electric SUV. It's 4.6 meters long, 1.85 meters wide, and it's 1.66 meters height with a 2.78 meter wheelbase. Trunk capacity, 468 liters in this rear wheel drive version. So it's not the biggest, but it's around par for the course, you know, size wise. I wouldn't complain about the trunk space. I find it to be sufficient, especially with the, the rear seats being as big and spacious as they are. Other sets about this car, as I said, rear electric motor, 218 horsepower, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.5 seconds. This starts here in Norway at 450,000 kroners, about 45,000 euros. But once you get a few options on this car like this, lacking the sunroof, but with the Bose sound system and the head-up display, it's around 50,000 euros or 500,000 kroners. And people have commented in my range test that uh, it's quite expensive for what you get. You can spend not a lot more money and you can get something like a Tesla Model Y long range, which is true, but once you get that car on the road, it's about 10,000 euros, 100,000 kroners more expensive than this. And for less than that money, for around 580,000 kroners or 80,000 kroners more than this, 8,000 euros more than this, you could get the E-Force with four wheel drive and the big battery pack, 87 kilowatt hour, hours and also all of the kits. So you don't have to spend a lot more money in the Aria lineup to get you know all the bells and whistles so it's up to you if it was my money I probably would have you know just spent a little more money to get you know a fully kitted out car but if you want a cheap version and you don't have the budget well you don't have other options than to go for the cheap version it's as simple as that One of the most important things of a car in 2022, in my opinion, is the cabin tech, the driver ergonomics, and just, you know, functionality of primary and secondary functions. And this is something I focus a lot on in my videos where we spend a considerable amount of time and I go through everything in detail like we're gonna do now in a second. And this is a way I think my videos are different than most you know, reviews out there on YouTube where they just briefly talk about you know, the infotainment system and how things work. And this is a way I think my videos well are different. So if you like that and want me to continue with that, please give this video a thumbs up down below because I think it is so important and 
glossed over so easily in a lot of videos. So let's start with the infotainment system, which is 12.3 inches in the driver display, and also the central display is 12.3 inches. Well, we're not gonna start there because we're actually gonna start with the steering wheel button. So you can see here, it is quite dark, and this is very strange about this car, but luckily to the left of the screen, there is a, a, a switch where you can turn up the brightness. And if I turn the one down, it goes completely dark. And then you have like, like 12 different brightnesses below that but it's it's really weird but if you go all the, one from the top it's this bright if you go all the way to the top everything is lit up so we're going to do that for the sake of this video so applaud to Nissan for having physical buttons on the steering wheel and not you know touch capacitive bullshit which is so distracting and dangerous and and useless but they don't have you know physical separated buttons when you press this you're pressing the whole panel down but it is accurate enough that you, I have had no issues at all so it, it's nice to use I'm not going to critique them for that but they're going to get points for having physical buttons so you control your audio controls here on the left side so you have your volume you have your track forward and backwards and then you have this array of buttons here in the middle between those which is kind of strange but you do get used to it where you do, you control the central display which is as i said 12.3 inches so i'm going to critique the display for what i don't like about it, it and that is the resolution and the frame rate which just makes the screens look and feel old frame rate here is, is is nice enough and also the the layout is not the best it's a bit clunky to use but it is very functional very clear to read so like in this uh, setting you have your your drive computer here you have your consumption your average speed it's really nice you also have to the right you have your speedometer to the left you have your power and also your if you're an e e pedal mode that's you know no nissan's one pedal driving which isn't true one pedal driving we're gonna get back to that in the driving section of this video you also have your drive mode down there and then you have your battery percentage and range up there so everything is is nicely laid out maybe a little bit cluttered but you have everything you want so before we hop into this screen on the right side you also have your adaptive cruise control settings which at first was a little bit confusing to use but now it, it works nice this blue button here is their auto steer which we're also going to get back to in the driving section and you also have your speed up and down and your activation of cruise control you also have your uh, distance there to the car in front and you also have your voice commands but physical buttons really nice and you also have you know you don't have a gear selector here like you have in a lot of cars so you have a full stock for your windshield wipers here in Norway especially in wintertime having you know a dedicated stock is really nice and I really do appreciate that and the reason they're able to do that is because down here in the center console you have the gear selector which feels a little bit flimsy but I'm gonna you know uh applaud them for having an actual gear selector in the center console because this is my favorite place your, your hand falls here naturally you don't have to stretch for anything like in my porsche Taycan, where if you stretch up here it's just it's just there readily available you have your park there it's just easy to use and also right below that you have your drive modes which also is an amazing place to have it this also has you know touch capacity buttons in this woodwork here which I would be critical to but it actually works and it looks cool so until that isn't you know just a novelty anymore I'm gonna yeah applaud them for that you also have your e-pedal there and then you also have your dedicated uh, panel here also in the woodwork is your HVAC and everything just feels nice and it has this nice haptic feedback and all the buttons are big and they're illuminated so you know if you're thinking now oh you're bashing always the Volkswagen cars the ID cars for having you know touch capacitive buttons yes the the difference there is it's in a small touch screen here it's in a dedicated place it never moves and it's illuminated and it looks cool I mean if you're going to do something different make it different like this is really cool so like I, I really think this is like the right way to implement new and cool tech and also you have a volume knob which I mean that's just a hundred points there that is really cool so let's move on to the infotainment system 12.3 inches and this may be the weakest point of the whole car because first off the resolution 
is not very good. The frame rate is, look at that guys, look at that frame rate. It's like an, like a, a generic uh, smartphone from like 2009, like a Nokia something express or what they were called back in 2009. I don't know. I, I sold consumer electronics back in the late 2000s and I don't remember, but this is, it, it, it's, it's not good at all. Look at that, look, like loading like it's a playstation 2 so i mean it's kind of hilarious it's, it's kind of hilarious uh you know if this was the only interface where you could interact with thing if you didn't have you know this if you didn't have this if you didn't have this this would be a really huge issue with this car but because you know, you have so many functions that work nice on the steering wheel. You have dedicated, you know, buttons here for your 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 mirrors. I'm looking at you, Tesla. It it's fine. It's fine. The the little thing you interact with, it, it's fine. Um, like it, it's okay. Navigation system is quite useless, even though it says it's powered by Google. It can't find half of the the thing. So like i'm gonna give them kind of a pass here because everything else works so nicely you have so many uh, other controls that work nicely but every, everything was buried here this would be a disaster so it's it's okay not the worst but definitely far from the best the nissan aria has a lot of positive things about it and you may have noticed from the video that i actually like this car a lot it doesn't have a lot of things that's a huge negative other than maybe the infotainment system as i said but one of my most favorite things about this car or possibly my most favorite thing about this car is the way it drives and the way it feels so we're on a stretch of road here in the suburbs outside of oslo where i test all cars this is a road i test all cars on so this is kind of my benchmark i have a whole bunch of roads around here where i test so these speed bumps for example and this is a road that will upset a lot of cars because it has a lot of undulations and a lot of hidden bumps that you can't see the asphalt looks smooth but it, it, it really isn't smooth and you don't notice that before you're driving a car that's not the best setup like the mustang mach e gt i drove earlier this year on mag ride just got so upset about this road it never settled down and you just felt like you were bouncing around all of the time even though mag ride gives you the initial suppleness just the suspension setup wasn't good here this car just is, is pinned down you have one motion and then you're done but the suspension is also very supple so you have good body control and you also have a very supple suspension you know it's not as soft or you know bolt like as something like a high-end ionic 5 but i would say this is closer to a kia ev6 maybe same level of comfort but just a little bit more taut and then you have the quietness of the cabin okay here also here you have some bumps you can't see them but the car's going like this also here a broken patch of pavement like where you have these joints just settles the upsets the car a little bit yes it looks smooth but it, it is not smooth trust me guys but yeah the cabin is really quiet in this car going at 100 110 120 kilometers an hour this is possibly combined with the mustang maki -E, the quietest car on the market but the Maki -E is cheating a little bit because it's on 18 inch wheels that are narrower so if i were to drive both cars side by side with the same size wheels this on 19s i'm pretty sure that this would have less road noise and less wind noise it's an impressive car to drive other than that steering is light but precise it's nicely weighted i mean nissan make a lot of sports cars they've been making sports cars for years i'm not saying this is a sports car but you can really feel that Nissan DNA here that, you know, they have experience with building the GTR, the Z cars, and yeah, just been doing this for a long, long time. And steering is, is really nice. You don't have a lot of feel, but it's weighted nicely. It just feels progressive. Yeah, I haven't found a way to turn off traction control, but if you give it a little power out of a roundabout, it will actually give you a little bit of slip. It's hilarious. It is really a nice car to drive so if you can look past the infotainment system and yeah smallish trunk i would highly recommend you guys to to take a test drive in this so let's stop somewhere i'll give you guys my conclusion and uh, find out if this car really was worth the long wait at this point in time i've driven pretty much all the cars in this segment 
ID4, Skoda Enyaq, Audi Q4 e-tron, Kia EV6, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Mustang Mach-E, Volvo XC40, Volvo C40, Mercedes EQA, EQB, and I'm probably forgetting some cars there, but there are so many cars in this segment of vehicle. It's kind of hard to come to a conclusion of how good a car is once you're testing them because I you know, test these cars over a period of time and the faults and issues you have with a car, like in your life, you, you forget the negatives. Like when you break up with, the, with your ex-girlfriend, it's like a few years later, you're like, huh, were, were things that bad? It's kind of the same with cars. And today, my only big issue with this car is the infotainment system. I like the way this car looks. I like the way it drives. I like the comfort. I like the interior quality. I like the quietness. I like, you know, the the controls. I like you have a screen here and a screen there, even though this infotainment system and also this, not the best. Overall, this car is not best at anything. I still think maybe there are a few cars that look better than this and also interior wise well this is pretty much up there interior wise i don't know if there's going to be any cars at this price price point that are going to be nicer than this maybe the volvo interiors are are the nicest mercedes also looks nice but doesn't feel as nice as it looks and maybe the sound system the Bose sound system in this it's it's okay it's not impressive I have a Bose sound system in my Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which isn't the most impressive either. Uh, this is not close to that level. It's okay. So, I mean, you have to go out and drive the cars in this segment because they are really close. That's what happens when you have a popular segment. All the cars are going to be really competitive. The competitors are going to pour a lot of resources and energy into making a good product. And this is fundamentally a good product. Even though I wish, you know, it would charge faster. Even though I wish this one had a bigger battery, but there is a bigger battery version. Maybe this is a little bit expensive compared to the bigger version. Maybe the price difference should be bigger. Maybe this should be about maybe, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 euros cheaper. Then this would be an amazing car. But at this price point, it's, it's just competitive. It's just competitive. But if it was my money, I think this would be on my top five list. Personally, and I forgot to cover this in the uh, Model Y performance review uh, I did the last time. I think the Volvo C40 for me, though a bit more expensive than this, really does it because it drives great, it looks great, it feels great. Best infotainment system on the market. But this is so much quieter. This is so much quieter. This is hard. And that stereo is also really good. And this is more spacious, more. So it really depends on your perspective. You can see me just like uh, going back and forth. Also Mustang mach -E, still one of my favorite, though not in GT trim. Yeah, this is a good car. Go out, test drive it. I can highly recommend this, guys, for you. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.